In part one of our DaVinci Wide Gamut Workflow series, we looked at setting up our color management, selecting and deploying our look, and taking our first pass through the timeline where we focused on exposure and contrast ratio. And with these pieces in place, we're ready to pivot off of exposure and contrast and talk about color. Now, just as with exposure and contrast, there are a million ways to alter color inside DaVinci Resolve, and it's all too easy to overcomplicate our work. So today I'm gonna to show you the essential concepts and techniques that drive the way I manipulate the color balance of every image I grade. All right, guys, so let's pick up where we left off in part one of this series, where we were taking our first pass through this timeline and focusing on our exposure and our contrast ratio. Today, we're gonna to pivot and we're gonna focus on our color balance, on the relationship or the ratio in between our red and our green and our blue in each of our shots. And there are a million ways to think about and apply these types of changes in Resolve. So we're gonna do our best to really focus the tools that we use and the concepts that we are keeping in mind as we work our way through this balancing pass. Before we dive into that, I wanna do a quick change to this template node graph that we made in part one of the series, which right now, as you can see, has only two nodes. We have our exposure node and our ratio node. I wanna add a third dedicated node for doing my color balance work. So I'm gonna add a serial node, right click, hit node label, and I'm gonna call this BAL for balance. And what I would like to do is append this empty labeled node to the tail of every single node graph for every single shot in this timeline, but of course, without wiping out all of the work that I've done with my exposure and my contrast ratio here in nodes one and two. So the way I'm gonna do that is go down here to the thumbnail for shot 128, which I'm currently on. I'm gonna tap that and then hit Command A. And I'm now gonna go up to my color menu and I'm gonna say append node to selected clips. All this is gonna do is take this empty BAL node and append it to the node graph for every single shot that I have selected, which in fact is every single shot in the timeline. So now that I've done this, I have a dedicated balance node that I can use to do my balancing work. And I'm gonna work my way through this timeline similar to the way I did with my exposure and my contrast ratio. It's gonna be intuitive, I'm gonna to try to move quickly, and I'm gonna to try to employ the right concepts and the right techniques so that I'm getting optimal results as quickly as possible. So let's start by talking about technique because there are a lot of different ways that we might choose to alter the overall balance or color of a particular image. Resolve has dozens of them right here at our fingertips. So we wanna figure out what the best ones are. Do we always wanna use the same ones? Do we wanna change it depending on what we're seeing in the shot? What's our guiding principle for which technique, which tool that we use to balance our shot? What I'm gonna to suggest to you is that you solely use a tool that we started talking about last week, and that's your offset. Why? Because your offset is the simplest tool available to you in DaVinci Resolve. And as I talk about in my ebook, The Colorist 10 Commandments, in chapter two, I talk about the fact that simplicity beats complexity. What does that mean? All that means is that all things being equal, if I can accomplish my goal equally well with two different tools, the simpler tool is the better tool to accomplish that goal with for a variety of reasons. So that means we should always be favoring, always be seeking the simplest possible tool that can get the job done. And since offset is the simplest tool available to us in Resolve, that's the right place to start. And we really should only move off of it if we have a good reason and we can't get the results that we're after with that tool. So we're gonna be focusing solely on the offset ball as we take this balancing pass today. And my basic workflow is that I'm just going to be nudging that ball on each shot that I land on and trying to improve on my overall balance. What does it mean to improve on that balance though? What are the ideas there? What are the things that I'm leaning on or looking for in order to make those decisions? Well, I'm gonna introduce you to them as we go along. The first one, the first anchor that I want you to think about when you are balancing shots using your offset is skin tone. So for any shot that has people in it, the most important color in that shot is going to be skin. So the first thing that we wanna think about when we're balancing is improving on, or at the very least, not making worse our skin tone. So I'm gonna start with uh, shot 128 here and just work my offset ball 
and try to optimize my balance thinking about that first anchor of my skin tone. To be honest, my skin feels pretty good as is, but when I look at the original image, I'm like, okay, maybe we're just a hair greeny yellow. So what I'm doing with my balance here is moving things just a bit more up here toward magenta. And you may even have a tough time noticing this ball moving because I'm working with my control surface and I'm making very small adjustments. And you'll notice that when you're working in color management in a log container like we are today, a little goes a long way. You're not gonna need to push things very far at all. And you can see that as I'm making this adjustment, we're talking about little tenths of a point down here in my offset that are making quite a large visual change. So here in this shot, just this little simple nudge as I go off and then on is kind of all that I need. And in fact, that's even more than I need. I'm gonna kind of back off and go closer toward where I began and continue to audition this adjustment off and on until I feel like the on is definitively better, definitively moving me closer to that first anchor of improving on my skin. And as I move my way forward here, I'm gonna talk about the second anchor that I'm using to guide my balancing operations, and that is separation. So another thing that I'm looking to do with every single shot that I land on when I go into balance is to not only improve on or preserve my good skin tone, but to max out my color separation. Color separation is simply the amount of color contrast between all the various hues in my image. So I'm looking to max that out simply because it's an easy thing to back off of, but it can be tough to find. So at this stage, I really wanna max it out and see how far I can push it, knowing that it's easy to back off of later on if that's what I want to do. And again, as I make this balancing adjustment, I'm just going off and on and confirming that I like my on better than my off, like so, and indeed I do. And I'm also seeing when I go through that exercise of flipping off and on, that oftentimes I'm going too far to find my sweet spot and I end up kind of walking my way back toward where I began, like so. Again, I wanna emphasize, this is a very feel-driven process and it's gonna take time and experience for you to get comfortable with it. But if you take the approach that I'm talking about, you've got a good framework for success. I'm gonna move forward here to shot 130 and just make a little nudge here. This shot is a great example of one where I don't really see anything that I wish to change, but I'm still gonna reach for my offset ball and just move it around and see if I can't improve on either my skin tone or my separation or maybe both. In this case, I don't feel like I'm getting much better than I had before, so I'm just gonna reset this node and put it back to where it started. Let's go over here to shot 131 where I can paste what I already did on shot 129 Anytime I have a repeating setup, I'm gonna assume that those setups match. That won't always be the case, but I can trust myself to notice when there's a mismatch there, as opposed to reevaluating every single shot or hand grading every single instance of the same setup. I'm going to assume that they are the same and paste exactly what I did in this instance here on this instance. And in this case, that works out great. Over here to shot 132, same idea. I'm just gonna paste what I did on shot 130, which is in fact nothing. Go back over here to shot 133, paste what I did on shot 131, and so on and so forth. So you guys can see a lot of the grading process for me once I've got my color management and my look and my overall foundation in place, it's just sort of playing this Pictionary exercise of going through and rippling out the same decisions on repeating instances of a particular setup. Let's go over here to this shot, and again, I don't see anything crazy offensive when I land on it, but I am just going to grab my offset ball and see if I can improve on things a little bit. And I feel like that's a good improvement there, although maybe a bit too far. So as I have already demonstrated today, I'm generally going to push in a particular direction and then conclude that I don't need to go quite that far. But if I don't go a little past the sweet spot, it's tough to know whether or not I have found it. So something like this, is I think a good balance here on this shot. Shot 136, I can borrow the grade from shot 134. Shot 137, I can borrow from one of these earlier shots of my female character. And again, I'm just kind of going through and playing Pictionary. And I'll point out as we're going along here, my goal is not to finish my balancing and perfect my balancing in this pass. My goal is to make sure that every single shot that I balance looks better than it did when I started in terms of these anchors that I'm identifying. So we've talked about skin tone, we've talked about separation, and I'm now gonna talk about the third anchor that I'm keeping in mind as I work my way through a grading pass, and that anchor is my overall flow, or what we might think of as our shot matching. So easy example, 
going from shot 138 to shot 139 here, I could have two beautiful grades on these two shots, but if they don't cut together well, then I'm really not doing my job as a colorist, right? I don't want the cuts to be felt by the viewer. I want everything to feel continuous and consistent. So I want to be mindful of creating that flow. However, I wanna point out to you guys that when you have good color management in place, when you have a good look in place, when you've got a good foundation of exposure and ratio in place, you do not need to play offense with matching. You can assume that your match will be reasonably good out of the box and only make adjustments as needed in order to better align things. But you don't need to assume that there are mismatches between every shot that you need to be a hero and manually align. It's a great example in this trio of shots here from 137 to 138 to 139. Obviously, we've got overlapping frame contents. We've got these washing machines in the background of all three shots, but they're hitting quite consistently on my vector scope, aren't they? That's even with the little balancing adjustments that I made here in shot 137. So not much that I need to do in terms of the way that I was taught to balance or match when I began grading of making sure that everything is perfectly aligned from shot one to two to three. Those things should be reasonably close by the time you get to this stage in the process. And you should just be paying attention for any discrepancies or mismatches as they present themselves. And just as important of a factor as the sort of hard match, as we might conceive of it, is what I would call the soft match or the flow, where I'm less concerned with matching the color of the washing machines between shot 138 and 139, and more concerned with how the cut feels, with whether it feels fluid and continuous, or whether it feels bumpy, which may or may not have anything to do with aligning the hues in the image, and more about just being sensitive to the frame contents and pushing things around in order to get a better and more seamless cut. So this is another shot that has so this is another shot that has a characteristic that I've noticed in quite a few of the shots we've graded so far today. Everything is skewing just a little bit kind of greeny yellow. So in a lot of these shots that I've seen thus far, what I'm doing is moving things up toward magenta a little bit toward this axis and maybe a little bit toward blue as well. And I'm generally finding that I go too far and then kind of backing things off closer toward where I began until I feel like I've found a nice sort of sweet spot. So that's a good adjustment there. And again, as I said, I'm not trying to be perfect here. I'm not trying to perform a high wire act. I'm just trying to get everything closer to where I want to see it go and trusting that I'm going to be able to continue to move things forward in subsequent passes. Let's go over here to shot 141. This actually looks really good right out of the box. But again, I'm just going to grab my offset ball and see if I can not improve on my skin tone, my separation or my overall flow just by nudging things around a bit. And here again, I'm finding something that I like and realizing I just wanna do a little bit less of it. So I'm ending up right around here and just making a very slight adjustment to this frame. It's barely perceptible, easier to see honestly in the scope than it is in the image itself. So this is the way that I'm going to complete my balancing pass through the rest of this timeline. And the first thing that I do once I finish this is I'm gonna take another lap. I'm gonna watch everything down. I'm gonna look at how the shots flow from one to the other and continue to make these intuitive adjustments to the balance of my frame and just react to what I'm seeing in real time. Another rule of thumb that's really helpful for you guys to keep in mind is that every second that you linger on a particular shot diminishes your ability to make a good evaluation of where that shot's at and where it needs to go. Because remember, we don't watch motion images statically. We watch them in motion, right? So when we're grading, we wanna stay in motion and it's better to do things in multiple passes and move quickly than it is to try to nail everything in that first pass. You can think of it sort of like trying to iron a shirt or a pair of pants. If you try to nail things by going really, really slow and just doing it in one single pass with that iron, what's gonna happen? You're probably just gonna set the garment on fire. You're certainly not gonna get very good results. Same idea here. You wanna take multiple passes as opposed to trying to nail things on that very first pass. So that's the idea here. I've almost reached the end of my timeline. I'm gonna take a victory lap through my balance here. And it's worth observing that even though we have a lot more fun that we're gonna get into in part three of this series, where we're gonna talk about secondaries and windows and qualifiers, most of the character of this grade is locked in by the time we get to this stage here, where we've got color management, we've got a look, we've got exposure, we've got ratio, and we've got balance. 
most of the end viewer's experience of this grade is going to be pretty well defined at this point. So we really want to embrace this part of the process and we really want to push things as far toward what we ultimately want to see as we can. So spend some time, try out this workflow, take a few passes, see what you can do in terms of these key anchors of skin tone, separation and flow using just your offset wheel. And that's gonna put you in an ideal position for the finesse adjustments that we're going to begin making in part three of this series. With our color management, look, exposure, contrast ratio and color balance all in place, most of the overall character of our grade is now locked in. As we move into the final video in this series, we're gonna shift our focus away from defining our grade and onto refining our grade using secondary adjustments. The best way that you can prepare for this stage is to pretend that it doesn't exist. Take another lap through your timeline as if your primary controls are the only ones you've got and make sure that you are pushing your grade as far toward completion as you can. I'm going to do the same with my timeline, and I'll see you back here for part three.